Yeah, um, obviously pleased, good win, awesome, awesome crowd. Uh, made a difference without a doubt. The place was electric. Um, defensively getting some turnovers early was huge for us. And then offensively, I thought we were pretty effective. Honestly, in the first half, you know, a couple red zone trips, we kicked field goals, made me a little nervous early on, but able to find a way at the, in the second half. That's a good football team. That's a good defense. Got some athletes running around, so I was really pleased offensively. Especially, you know, DJ, accurate, recognizing some coverage, making some plays there. Knew it was going to be a four-quarter fight and uh, really happy to be, you know, on the right side of it. Before the before Cooper's pick six, how did you feel like the energy was? And then right after, how did you feel like that impact? The that was big. There's no question. I mean, again, this, this thing was going to be up uh, back and forth. But we had a little bit of a lead, and then he takes it back to the house. That was a huge for momentum piece going into halftime. Now we started with the ball, we didn't get anything done. Third quarter, they we got to stop on defense, and then we were able to separate again. So big-time play, though, by Coop. What sort of impact did you feel having uh, Ryan and, and, and Jaden back in the lineup? Yeah, it helped. Ryan. Yeah, it helped. We got confidence with those guys. I think Jaden made some big-time pass breakups on deep balls tonight. That You know, those things, you know, that's a 40-, 50-yard gain. If the guy catches it, Jaden breaks it up. And so it helps with our confidence having, our confidence having those two veterans back there. Over the last couple of games, Jack Velling seems to have been your guys' kind of secret weapon, although I don't feel like it's a secret. Everyone knows how good he is. How important has his impact on the field been for you guys in these last two games and especially tonight? Yeah, huge plays tonight. A lot of it was coverage recognition by the quarterback. I think Aiden does a great job. It's third down. We're trying to throw the ball in the end zone. They, they were soft in coverage. Jack's the one on, in the flat. Aiden recognizes it, getting the touchdown. Later, DJ. I mean, we've got some other stuff on the outside. It goes to cover two. They got open middle coverage, and he creases that thing. That was a good ball. Jack comes down with it. Big play by Jack after, you know, we're faking more or less wildcat run with DJ underneath the fender, gets under, tips it. Silas catches the ball. And then later, <laughs> we're trying to throw a wheel route to Jack, kind of late pressure, tipped up in the air. Or not tipped, but Jack goes up and highs, high points the ball. So a bunch of plays by Valley. Did that play scare you at all? Which play? The one that was kind of a jump ball situation. Yeah, a little bit. Veling's open going down the sideline. We're just a little late getting to him because of the protection. Um, but guys got to make some plays, and, and Veling definitely did. You guys are now six for six on fourth down conversions in your last two games. Do you have some sort of sixth sense, or can you just see into the future? Or is it just a feeling thing when you get into those moments that you, you, you feel like you can make those conversions? Yeah, you know, I think the one, uh, I'm thinking about the one tonight, you know, that field position, long field goal attempt, you know, you're going to punt, and how much were you really going to gain? So being aggressive there, that was a good throw to the sideline to, to Anthony Gould by DJ. How important did you feel like it was for DJ to pair up back-to-back Pretty good performances, and what what are you see what are you seeing from him in these last couple of games? that's kind of elevated his play. Yeah, I think he's been more and more accurate, and I think that's come from his comfort level. I mean, again, you're talking about a first uh, first year in a system where there's going to be some learning curve early on. I think back to back, he's played really, really well. He's throwing it accurate. He's feeling confident with the guys to make some plays for him, and uh, and so you know, more or less halfway point. Hopefully, he can continue this. You you alluded to the crowd tonight. It, it seemed like the crowd had more of an impact tonight than maybe it's had in quite a while. On, maybe on the other team, your team, I don't know. Did you feel that way? Or? I think it energizes our, our guys, especially on defense, energizing our guys on, on defense, but also making it hard, hard on the opponent, hard on the, uh, the officiating crew at the same time. What are the things you may have seen on film or uh, emphasized in practice that allowed you to come out of this game with three interceptions? Yeah, um, I don't know if it was all film study. I think it is. You, if you can affect the cue, make him move his feet, get it get it extended. Um, we've got some guys in the secondary that can catch the ball. Achilles comes up big. We're hitting the quarterback for chats and on his pick, and then Coop does a good job of recognizing kind of the route, working the sideline in pseudo two minute. So that's probably a little bit of Coop's film study. Uh, so it's all combined. You got to affect the cue, and then when they throw it to you, you got to be able to catch it. He lost a couple of receivers after last year, and obviously you had some returners in that room. But how big and important has Silas's play been, you know, in incorporating DJ into this offense? Yeah, Silas has been huge. Got the big post ball down um, off a of play action pass. Silas and, and Anthony, we felt both of those two could and we would need to have kind of big seasons and make big plays in both of them. I mean, Gould last week, third down. Gould's got some huge catches again tonight. And, and Silas has been lights out really from the whole year. 
You continue to um, to give Aiden that that drive in the first half. A couple weeks in a row, he's had a really short field to work with, but not a lot of long drives with him. But what are you seeing in, in these games with the, with Aiden on the field? Yep, we again, we just feel like the more opportunities you get, the better he gets. We're really confident in him. We're not changing the offense when he goes into the game. Um, he's confident when he goes out there. I think it's been a nice mixture for DJ and Aiden to continue to work throughout the week because they both feel like they're preparing to get uh, get plays. Look, the guy's our backup quarterback currently. We want to keep getting him in the game. So if he's called a bond to uh, win us a game, he's ready to do it. You, you've mentioned in the past that um, there's no real perfect time to have a bye week. How do you feel about this one? You've won two in a row, but I imagine there's some bang, guys banged up. Yeah. How do you feel about this one? We feel good. I mean, we do. We got some guys banged up even, even tonight. These games are physical. UCLA is a physical football team. And so proud of the guys to kind of finish this one off, knowing that we got the, the off week and we got to recover and get refreshed. Jonathan, what does it say for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the offense's confidence to be able to have, you know, 36 points against a really good defense? Yeah, I, this, this is a good defense, and they're going to hold a lot of people to, to low numbers. Um, again, we got to make sure the, the run game, pass game, we got to keep that going. Definitely helps when the defense scores, right, to, to get that point total up. And, you know, each, each week's going to be new, but uh, we felt good offensively what we, what we were able to get done. A couple weeks now where the run defense hasn't quite been as sharp as we had seen the first part of the season. Is that kind of an area of concern, or is that maybe just UCLA didn't have a great time throwing the ball tonight and decided to run more? No, it's going to be an area of focus. There's no question. You know, we get the bye week to kind of study ourselves. We got to shore some things up. I, you know, this I think this rushing total is way higher than we wanted back to back weeks, and so that's something we got to definitely put an emphasis on. It seemed like we started the season with Damian Martinez being the primary ball carrier, but that looks to have kind of become a more balanced running back running back by committee with Deshaun Fenwick putting up great numbers as well, and both of them kind of contributing equally. How do you feel about their uh, production as a group moving forward? Feel good. We want to have multiple backs. I think we got one A and one B. Fenwick's had some really good carries. He makes it physical. We got all the confidence of the world with him. And so, yeah, we'd like sharing the load in the run game, keeping those guys fresh. Um, when I was leaving out of the stadium, I heard a couple fans yelling at the UCLA team, calling them traitors, and there were other things mentioned to them. Does it mean anything to you guys to you know sort of rack up these wins and show like? Like you guys have been saying all season, you guys belong amongst those you know top programs in the country. Well, I, I do think we belong competing at the highest level, and we continue to prove it. Um, at the same time, it's not individual to UCLA, especially their players. They had nothing to do with it uh, on that end. They got some really good players. They're going to continue to have a, a big-time year. Thanks, guys.